knowledge. It's not free. You have to pay attention. I'm going to pat it, in my opinion. Five, five, three. Looks like he's going to jump. If he handles the distance and he's not overwhelmed by the lack of seasoning, five, five, three. I could see a two. I could see a one. I can even see a zero if he's a really good horse. If he goes forward, puts him, and gets the distance, puts him square in the race. I don't care if he ran in two, one, or whatever. Doesn't make no difference to me. Uh, if we're talking strictly on the thoroughbreds, this horse fits as a forward moving pattern and looks dangerous based on that. So that's Mage. Big horse, but light on his feet. And he's always showed up and been consistent and been right there with some of the top horses in training. In the Bluegrass Stakes, he showed his determination and his raw ability. It's over! Sandon wins the Toyota Bluegrass! I feel readers will be really blown away by what a striking, outstanding looking horse he is. Register now for the 2024 Pass the Wire Kentucky Derby Seminar. In-depth analysis of every horse, contenders, pretenders, live long shots, and more. The Kentucky Derby Seminar on PassTheWire.com. Reserve your seat today. Remember, nobody does it better. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Okay, without further ado, Kentucky Derby by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns. We are ready to get the show started and uh, see where we wind up. I think uh, one thing that is extremely interesting to me this year is that I don't have as many contenders as I normally have in uh, my short on my short list for the Kentucky Derby. Normally, at this point, there's 20 horses, and I got about 10 or a dozen that are kind of, you know, checking some of the boxes and are on the radar. This year, my list is a lot shorter. But as you know from previous thoroughbred numbers and patterns shows. This is not the end all be all of, of, of handicapping the race. This is just identifying the patterns that we like and the patterns that we don't like because it's all in the patterns and we know that. So, uh, you, you, you know, we're going to try and decipher who's fast enough, who's not fast enough, who's going to peak, who's going to bounce uh, and see, you know, you know, where they, where they, where, where they shake out. Now, Everybody reads the numbers and the patterns differently. Uh, you may read them different than I do. If it was as simple as looking at the fastest number, we could all get online, bet fierceness, open our phones, bet fierceness, and just wait to see how much money gets deposited into our accounts because he's run the fastest race by far of anybody in there. But it is not that simple. Uh, not only are there... 101 other factors that go into handicapping and painting the picture of a race and how it's going to be run. But there is also the uh, fact that it's not, you know, just the fastest thoroughbred number that indicates who the fastest horse on any particular given day is. Um, if they all ran their fastest number every time, I mean, be kind of boring. It would take a little bit of the challenge and the talent it takes uh to really beat this game right out of the equation so that's not the case uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a silks horse running in the derby or one of the uh undercard races or big races that weekend i salute that's phenomenal uh sure bed coffee where's my camera you should be drinking it it's the best and it's a great cause no reason not to 
Doug Graff, we know what, what they've done for us with so many races, uh, Mage, Pretty Mischievous, White of Barrio, so many others. Uh, you know, just uh, the numbers and the patterns don't lie. And that's what we're going to get into here. Uh, if you don't have a seat yet for the re a reservation for the, for the seminar, what are you waiting for? Jump on board, ride with us. Uh, that's when we'll really get into handicapping and deciphering some of these races. Also, Thorograph has a great seminar uh, uh, on their numbers that comes out a little closer to the race that you could watch in addition to this show that we are about to do. Hopefully, you all watched the Oak Show, Ladies First. Now we're going to do the Derby Show uh, and see where things shape up. Uh, got a lot of horses to go through, so let's get right to it. Uh, catalytic, two year old, nine, three year old, ten and three quarters, three and a quarter. Uh, I like the pattern this year. I don't like the fact that he didn't go forward off the first race, uh, as a three year old, but he jumped from a ten and uh, three quarters to a three and a quarter. That's a big jump. Has he bottomed out yet? I don't know. Uh, but. I don't like that big of a jump coming back then, you know, in the Derby. I see a a, a, a likely bounce or regression off that number, uh, even though it was his first race routing, uh, kind of thrown to the wolves a little bit there. I give him a lot of credibility for that race, but I'm still worried about that big, you know, seven plus point jump forward. Catching Freedom, a horse that's going to take his share of support, based on the connections nine and three quarters nine and three quarters as a two-year-old uh we got seven and a quarter five four and three quarters uh seven five four getting faster getting better not too fast not big jumps slow steady progression we love that that's a pattern that we always look at and that we always consider he's got that uh so you know it is what it is uh common defense has a nice pattern uh a little slower than some of the others but still nice and mcpeak is a tough guy to read uh we got that nine and a quarter we got a nine and a quarter we got an eight and three quarters then we got paired sevens love those paired sevens this horse is definitely sitting on a forward move is he able to jump forward enough to win a race like the kentucky derby that's a little iffy. He's going to have to really jump forward in my book, but he's definitely uh, showing signs of a horse that is going to jump forward and, and, and move forward. Deterministic, we're not going to go over because we already got the word that he's out. He's on the list, but he's out. Domestic product, Chad's other horse, and maybe his other, 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 other horse because he's got uh, – you know, two or three that are not running in the Derby that look like towards the latter part of the year, they could be as good as any. One is that horse he run from the rail. I forget his name in the bluegrass that took the lead. Uh, he's got that other horse that ran big, Tuscan Gold. I think his name is at the fairgrounds. Those are two horses I think are going to be forces to be reckoned with later on down the line. But that's, that's a conversation for another day. Domestic product, 17 jumps forward to a seven, regresses to a 14 and three quarters as a two-year-old. This year, he pairs sevens, kind of. He runs a seven, then a seven and a quarter, uh, both very slow-paced races. Uh, Derby Day will be the first time he gets uh, a legitimate pace to close into, and we'll see what that does for him. But he's got those paired sevens, even though, you know, one's a seven, one's a seven and a half. It's close enough for me to call him paired. And I like that. Uh, again, he's another one. I wish he was a little bit faster. He's not, but he definitely has got those paired sevens that tell me he's going to go forward on Derby Day. And Chad is a trainer that peaks for the races that he's pointing for. Door knock. And, you know, like I said on the Yoke Show, if you watch that, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail or a little, you know, give a, a, a couple little tidbits about horses here that I normally don't do on the Thoroughgraph Show. Uh, you know, I usually stick to the patterns, but there are some things I just think are worth mentioning. And, you know, Dornock is one of them. Uh, haven't liked this horse. I said from the day that 
he beat Sierra Leone in the Remsen, he would never beat him again. Thus far, I'm right. I thought Sierra Leone ran much better that day. And if you watched our Derby Radar shows, I've explained why many times uh, than Dornock did, even though Dornock came back on the inside again and beat him. I was think I thought that was more Sierra Leone's doing than Dornock's. But so far, I've been right. He hadn't beaten him, uh, and I don't think he will. The other thing, I don't really – there's two horses in this race. I don't like their action, which means I don't like the way they move and they run when they get over the racetrack. Uh, I'm no trainer. I'm no horseman. That is not my expertise. But I see, you know, I trust my eyes. You know, uh, I see what I see, and I call it the way I see it, and I don't like Dornock's action. Uh, and that's a big a big deterrent to me. Uh, on the numbers, we got a 10, we got an 8.5, we got a 6, we got another 6 as a 2-year-old. He was looking really good. He comes back, he runs a six and a, and, and, and a half in a week race, then a six and a quarter uh, in the bluegrass, which is a nice number. Uh, you know, his numbers, his patterns say he's a contender and, 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 and he's going forward. I can't get past his action, and I don't think he's as good as Sierra Leone, so there's that. But he does have a pattern that if you like him, I'm not going to tell you he's got a pattern that says he can't win. Now, the thing about it is, this is the Kentucky Derby. These are the best three-year-olds around, with the exceptions of, of, of Bob Baffert's horses who are not allowed to run, because uh, those are some of the best three-year-olds around too. But they're not in the race, so we don't really got to worry about them. But you can expect a lot of good patterns and a lot of forward-moving patterns. We've got to decide for the best one and the fastest one. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of horses that have good forward-moving patterns, but we got to pick who, 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 who's going to be the fastest of those. And Sino. And Sino is one of the ones that could be really fast. Uh, you know, started on the synthetic with a 13, goes to a seven, hits the dirt, runs a two and a half for Keeneland on the lead. Uh, this is a horse that I think can be, you know, on the lead, just off the lead. I don't think he's bottomed out. I think he's going the right way. And his forward moving pattern is faster than any of the other ones we have saw thus far. So if he goes forward off a two and a half, he's right smack in this thing. Uh, another thing I'll say is, you know, the three starts doesn't deter me. You know, last year we talked about Mage, and I don't know if I can quote myself, but uh, – I think I said didn't run at two, doesn't make no difference to me, uh, something like that. And this horse only got three starts, doesn't make no difference to me. Contender moving forward and fast enough to win. Uh, and Godolphin's been trying to win this race forever. So maybe they finally they finally got their horse that could get them there. Endlessly, uh, you know, he's a turf horse. He's run on the synthetic and won. You know, he may try to turn the dirt for the first time in the Derby. And, you know, historically, turf horses do run well over the Churchill Downs dirt. Uh, is he going to try it? I guess we'll find out. But let's look at his pattern. 18 and a half, nine and a half, seven and three quarters. And then in the Breeders' Cup, we got a nine and a half. Comes back as a three-year-old, eight and a half, six. Uh, that six at Turfway Park is nice. He's got a forward-moving pattern. Uh, he's supposed to have a forward moving pattern. He's a good horse like we discussed, but is he as fast as some of the others? The answer to that is no. Can he jump forward and be as fast as some of the others? That remains to be seen, but I'm going to gravitate to the ones I know are fast enough, not the ones I have to guess that they're going to go, you know, that far forward. Brings us to fierceness. Uh, fierceness is an enigma. If you think he's not, you're wrong. Uh, He's got some very fast races that if he runs back to them, obviously makes him clearly the horse to beat and the fastest horse in the race if he can carry that you know, kind of, kind of race and speed a mile and a quarter. We don't know yet that he can, and we also don't know yet that he can't. What we do know is that he's never won a fight where he's been looked in the eye, but he has been training with other horses looking in the eye. So I got to think that Todd Pletcher – is well aware of what I just said and trying to, you know, get some heart into him. But that's not something you can train or teach. That's either there or it, it isn't, and we don't know that it is. You know, he hasn't never won two races in a row. 
and he has never won, you know, where things haven't gone perfect for him. Maybe the Derby will set up perfect for him. We won't know that till we do the seminar and handicap the race. But off the numbers, what do we see? We see Saratoga, three and a half. We see the 12 dud in the, um, what was that, the Champagne. Then we see the monster race in the Breeders' Cup where we want to run a one and a half negative number. Uh, comes back, does not go past that one and a half negative number. And that's the kind of number that could knock out any horse. Uh, but he comes back and he runs a four and a half, doesn't go past the, the number, doesn't even go past his first number, which was the three and a half at Saratoga. Uh, but then... He runs that race in the Florida Derby where he just said, ha ha, look at me, three and a quarter negative, uh, by far the fastest that anybody in this race has run. If he repeats that, they're probably running for second. But can he repeat that is a big question. And does his patent say he will? I would have to say the answer to that is no. We've got three fast races. And in those three fast races, we've got a three and a half regresses to a 12. We got a one and a half negative regresses to a four and a half. Now we got a three and a half negative. Where does he go from there? Uh, I wouldn't want to bet that he goes forward off of that number. Now, that number is fast enough to be able to regress and win. Uh, but I don't like to bet horses to regress and win. I like to bet horses I think are going to go forward. So I don't like fierceness's patent. Uh, it tends to me to be a pattern that signifies a regression. And when you couple that with the not winning, you know, two in a row and never having won a fight or, you know, having to overcome any adversity, which in the Derby there's a, a, at least a chance that he might have to do, I got to go against the pattern. Uh, Forever Young, that's the other horse whose action I don't like. I don't like the way he gets over the racetrack. I didn't like it in Saudi Arabia. I didn't like it in Dubai. Probably putting these horses right in the winner's circle, but you know me. If you've been watching my show and following me, you know I'm not afraid to call it out how I see it. And, and let me tell you, nobody should be. You want to know why? Everybody. I don't care how good you are, how good you think you are, or, or, or what, what your opinion of yourself or anybody else is. Everybody who plays this game is going to be two things. One, you're going to be humbled by horses at some point. If you haven't been already, you will be. Uh, two, everybody, everybody that plays this game is wrong more than they're right. So the key or one of the main keys of beating this game is knowing how to compensate for that and overcome that and knowing how to make it count when you are right, which is one of the things that I do best. So afraid to be wrong? No. That old saying, scared money don't win, absolutely true. If you're going to doubt your own opinion, you're in the wrong sport. You're in the wrong game. Uh, can't can't play that way. So I don't like Forever Young's action. Now, if you remember in the Breeders' Cup last year, there were two horses training in the morning that everybody was raving about that I said, I don't like, I don't like the way they get over the racetrack. I think they both scratched. Uh, one was Archangelo. I forget for the minute who the other one is. But... I do not like the way Forever Young gets over the racetrack. I do like his pad. Uh, this Japanese horse, 11, 8, 5, and 3 quarters as a two-year-old. Nice, moving forward, steady, not major jumps, but good jumps, okay? This year, he comes back, and in Saudi and Dubai, he pairs ones, very fast races. He was wide. He was game, but he was game in Saudi running down Bookham Dano, who don't want to go that far. Looked like they were both staggering to me, but he did get a one. I got to respect the number. Um, Dubai looked like he was beat, dug in, fought, got up. Uh, maybe he's just a fighter and he could win even with that, you know, action that I don't like. And again, I'm not a horseman, so, you know, maybe my not liking his action ain't all that, but. I bet my opinion. So I have a hard time getting past that pattern. It's a phenomenal pattern. Uh, and if you're just strictly going off the patterns, 
He's got one that says he can win the race. Absolutely. That said, I'm probably not going to be able to get past my opinion of his action. But we'll see. Race day comes. I'm, you know, when the past performances and post position, all that stuff is out, maybe I'll change my mind. Grand Motor first. 14 and a half, 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters. 10 and three quarters. Pairs up. Did he pair up sixes? Yes, he did. Um, I'm sorry, I got the split screen, and the other screen's a little bit strong, small. And even with my prescription glasses, sometimes I can't see. Uh, I'll get them right, but I just maybe have to, you know, you, you know, move. I'm not going to give you wrong numbers. Although I did do that once, I called out a number wrong, and somebody pointed it out. You know, internet, you make a mistake, everybody wants to jump all, all over you. But I, I did appreciate that the guy pointed it out, so I'm, I'm only, you know, kind of messing around. Uh, but those paired sixes look nice. They really do. Uh, looks like he's going to go forward. But again, fast enough, borderline. Lean more towards the negative uh, on, on, on that end. Okay, here's another one that's going in the right direction. A little a little strange route pattern-wise, but Anna Marie, 11, 7, 5 and a half as a two-year-old. As a three-year-old, we got nine and three quarters, five and a half. Going the right way. Looks fast enough. Uh, didn't 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 really go past the number first time out, but certainly did second time out. You know, this is a horse that's going the right way and might be a uh, a dangerous type of long shot off his patent um, if things set up for him. So he's one that I would put on the list of, 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 of ones to watch if you're so inclined. Uh, just a touch. Screams talent, his pattern. Nothing at, at two to look at, but at three, what do we got? We got two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. This horse done nothing but run two and a halves. Uh, lightly raced, learning the game. Hasn't done it enough times to say that's his level. He's not going to go forward. I love that pattern where you repeat those good numbers to you know signify a forward move. I see a forward move. Uh, love the three numbers. The lightly raced nonsense does not bother me at all. You know, used to be you needed a lot of bottom, a lot of experience to win the Kentucky Derby. That's changed. Uh, lightly raced horses win it, a la Mage, a la Justify, a la a bunch of others. Uh, doesn't really matter. So, uh, very interesting horse, just a touch. Just steal. This one's got a lot of races. What do we got? We got a 26 and a quarter. We got a nine and three quarters, seven and three quarters, 14 and a quarter, 18, nine and a half. Then he jumps all the way to a two and a half. Off the two and a half, he comes back and runs an eight. Then he goes forward again to a two and a half. Then he runs a seven. Then he runs a one. Now, here's a horse that we've got three fast races he regressed off every one of them the last one is his fastest one yet uh i gotta say he's gonna regress again i don't want to look for a horse that's that that's gonna regress even though a one is a fast number so he could regress to a you know a two and you know three maybe still still be a contender depending on you know how they come back but i want a horse that's going forward not that's going backwards no matter how you know fast it is Brings us to Mystic Dan. Interesting horse. No question about that. Nine and a half. Six and a quarter. Fourteen and a half. Comes as a three-year-old. Nine and a half. Zero and a quarter in the mud. Three and a half. So, what do you do with a horse like this? He's got a fast race as a two-year-old. Six and a half. He's got a very fast, you know, zero and a quarter number as a three-year-old albeit in the mud he regressed a little off that uh he was entitled to i think this is a horse that can go back to a fast race uh and when i say fast i mean you know faster than the you know three and a half closer to that to that to that zero so he's got he's got in my opinion 
a good pattern. Uh, it's a good, bad, zigzag type of pattern. Good race, bad race, good race, bad race. But, you know, I don't love that pattern, but I like it a lot better when it's going in that direction uh, as opposed to a horse coming to a bad race. Resilience. Resilience is a horse I liked in the Wood Memorial. He seemed to really put it together. I would call that a visually impressive race. Did not come back exceptionally fast. Uh, but let's look at his pattern. We got 15 and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. Uh, goes to a six and a half, and then a four in a wood memorial. Uh, I wish that wood was a little faster, but this is a horse that's getting faster, and four is fast enough to go forward off and be in contention because, you know, two, three, four points forward puts him, puts him in the, in the, in the mix with at least, at least some of these contenders. So, uh, I'd say forward moving pattern dangerous. Then we come to, uh, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a horse I've been high on since I first saw him. But let's see what the numbers say. The numbers say nine, four and three quarters, four and a half. So he goes forward in his first three-year-old start, a little bit off the two-year-old start, and then he runs a one and a half in that uh, bluegrass win. So we got a four and a half at the fairgrounds, one and a half. Visually, we know that his last three races, he was wide. My opinion, uh, fantastic pattern going forward nine four and a half four and a half one and a half where's he go off that one and a half uh, zero one negative one and a half two negative maybe uh that puts him almost close to fierceness's best race so fierceness regresses a little bit or doesn't put two together i think i think that you know the pattern says that this freight train locomotive uh is going to be coming and running at the end. And you definitely want a horse with a forward moving pattern that's going to be running at the end. So Sierra Leone is absolutely uh, a serious, serious player with a serious pattern and and and, and fast enough to win the race. Uh, you know, a, a one, one and a half can wind up winning this race. There's no question about that. So uh, Sierra Leone, dangerous. Society man, 23, 10, 13 and a half, 10, four and a quarter. Big jump forward. Uh, kind of worries me a little bit. Uh, when he jumped forward from the 23 to a 10, he regressed to a 13 and a half, although there was a, a, a lot of time in between the 23 and the 10. Uh, there's not a lot of time now. I tend to see it as a as a as a as a, as a regress pattern. Uh, stronghold, stronghold is a horse that we know can fight, and he's one that's got a really really good pattern and on borderline fast enough. Eight, seven, seven and a half, seven as a two year old. Nice, not too fast, not too slow, but fast, getting faster. Uh, as a three year old, six and a quarter. Five and a half. Going to go forward. Now, forward enough to get those horses that are, you know, at those twos and ones, that's a big jump. But at this time of year, those horses can make those jumps. And, you know, like I said, we're going to add some tidbits. This is a horse that's going to be sitting in the right spot, knows how to win a fight, going to get to jump on some big closes, knows how to reel in other horses, and he's got Antonio Fresu riding him, who's riding as good. I don't care what you tell me. All right, I watch riders close. I know my riders. Antonio Fresu is damn good. Top class rider, riding as good as anybody in the country, quietly out there in California. But make no mistake, this guy can horseback and is going to have this horse in the fight. Uh, is he fast enough? We'll find out. But he's definitely got a very, very good pattern. T.O. Password, the other Japanese horse. We got no numbers on this horse. 
this horse gets in, knocks other horses out because of the, you know, system they got where they're trying to get some international flavor to these races. I get it, but uh, I don't know what to make of them. Um, I haven't watched his replays yet. I will. I'll be prepared on this horse for the seminar, but we really can't offer any numbers or analysis of his patent because he ain't got one. So at least not one that we can see. Track Phantom. Track Phantom. Not in love. Nine, nine, seven, five. As a three-year-old, six, six, seven. Doesn't go past this two-year-old number. Number's going the wrong way at this point. That's a pass for me. Don't like the patent. Last, not least, West Saratoga. Uh... <clears throat> We got 23, 20, 14, 11 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, 7, 10 and three quarters as a two-year-old. Comes back, doesn't go past that number, but shows steady improvement. 11 and three quarters, 8, 7. He's got a forward-moving pattern, but not fast enough to, you know, be in contention with the others. So uh, going backwards, West Saratoga. I'm going to say no. Track Phantom, no. TO Password is a mystery. Stronghold, good patent, potentially fast enough. No knocks there at all. Uh, Society Man, we said no. Sierra Leone, freight train, make no mistake about it. Here comes the locomotive. Uh, resilience, definitely a forward moving patent, can be one of the ones that can surprise. Uh, Mystic Dan, another one who's got. You know, you know, uh, he's got a race that, that that that's fast enough to win this, and you know he's on the the forward end of the zigzag pattern. Uh, not in love with him, but he is. Uh, just steel, no, looks like a regress, just a touch. Very intriguing pattern. Certainly, uh, looks like he's going to be fast enough. Anna Marie, another one that's going forward, live long shot. Uh, doesn't have to go forward that much to get to the fastest ones in here. Grand Motor first. Uh, I think we 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 voted him down. Uh, borderline, but uh, you know does have a forward moving pattern. But I'd like it to be a little faster. But he's not that far behind. Forever Young, excellent pattern. Don't like his action, but the pattern is excellent. Uh, fierceness, we spoke a lot about. Um, I see a regression uh, in his pattern. It reminds me a little bit of, of Dreaming of Julia. Uh, run that six negative in the prep race at Gulfstream for the Kentucky Oaks, and everybody couldn't wait to bet on her at odds on. And Todd's other horse, Princess of Silmar, win the race at 25 to 1. And yes, we had her, and we were dead set against Dreaming of Julia on the bounce theory. Now, in fairness, Dreaming of Julia didn't get out of the gate well. And that might have contributed to the bounce. But a bounce is a bounce is a bounce. And they're not only for basketballs. And, you know, she regressed. Uh, fierceness looks to me like he might regress endlessly. Steady. Might like the turf. You know, definitely. I might like the dirt. Turf force. Uh, if he runs, he's not hopeless, especially if we get a, a, a pace collapse. And Sino is definitely on the, on the high short list. Uh, high on, on, on that list. Uh, he's only got, you know, he's going forward and only got to go forward a little bit off that two and a half. So he's definitely one of the ones that that, that I'm looking at. Dornock has got a pattern, but don't like his action. But, you know, his numbers say he's, you know, going to go forward. Um, domestic product, another one that looks like it's going to go forward. But, you know, and, and you know, the interesting thing about him is he's going to probably get the first fast pace to close into that he's ever seen. So, you know, that, that kind of upgrades those paired sevens to me a little bit. Uh, deterministic is out. We said that. Uh, common defense. Decent pattern going forward, but a little slower than the others. Catching freedom. Uh, he had a good pattern, you know, a little bit behind some of the ones I like more than him, but definitely had a good pattern. Um, cataclytic looked like a, a, a regression to me. So that is my analysis on the thoroughgraph numbers and patents for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, 
you know, to me, it is what it is. It's all in the patterns and numbers uh, when it comes to thoroughgraph th and, and how you read it. Uh, that's how I read it. Uh, you know, you may read it differently. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. We'll have some good discussion. We'll definitely discuss a lot more of this uh, when we do the seminar. Uh, and we'll have a lot more handicapping, you know, to, to go off when we, when we do the seminar. And we'll be able to decide then, uh, you know, who the picks are and who the picks aren't. But again, if you narrow down the shortlist, I got two or three on there that are really on my shortlist that are, you know, horses I'm considering wagering on. You know, just because a horse has a forward moving pattern. Like I said, to me, the sevens moving forward off the sevens. A little too slow. Six, borderline, could go either way. Five is fast enough, and anything faster than a five is 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 indicative to me that they can go forward fast enough to win the race. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed the show. These shows are a lot of work. A lot of production goes into them. Uh, so we appreciate everybody that watches, everybody that subscribes to the channel everybody that hits the like button, everybody that leaves a comment, everybody that says thanks. Uh, thank you all. Grazie. Much, 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 much appreciated. So do, do, do I know who's going to win the Kentucky Derby today? No such. Nobody does. Anybody that tells you that doesn't know what they're talking about. Anybody tells you they know who's going to win the Derby today, you should not be listening to at all. Uh, Plenty of time to make your decision. Um, I do know, and I've said this all along, that I love Sierra Leone as a racehorse. I think he's coming into his own. I think he's been brought along perfectly by Chad Brown, who has brought horses to the Derby perfectly before without winning. Uh, this might be his year, but we got to see how the pace shapes up and everything else shapes up. Uh, and, you know, paint the picture. And we'll do that once the the, the time, time comes, but, uh, you know, he's to me is, is, is probably the leader of the, of the, of, of the class above fierceness because of the questions that we have about fierceness and, you know, the heart and guts and, 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 and that kind of stuff. But that, that, you know, that, that three negative number is by far faster than anybody else has, has run. And if, you know, Todd Pletcher can get him to do that again. Like I said, you know, the race might be for second, but I would bet that the answer to that question is is probably no. And the only way that would change is when we do the race, we see the perfect scenario for him where he's drawn to stalk some speed or get the lead or something like that, you know. Um, and if he clears by two or three, then, you know, every, every, everything changes. But it looks like at this early juncture, we got pace in the race. Um Remember, the Derby is a tough race. It's a rodeo. Uh, there's always great spots on the undercard um, to go after. We'll try and find some of them at the seminar because they could be a lot easier to cash than the Derby. The Derby, there's always, always some luck involved. Um, Breeders' Cup Day, Derby Day, those are the days I like to play the pick sixes. Uh, I don't really play them anymore except for those two days uh, with some – you know, very few rare exceptions. Uh, we did the O.J. Simpson story, a lot more racetrack tails, and that's tails spelled T-A-L-E-S or T-A-I-L-S, depending on your preference. But uh, a lot more of them coming up too. So not only do we have handicapping, we've got that great Dylan Davis day-in, day-out series that Jim did. Uh, we're going to have boots on the ground at the Derby. We're going to have boots on the ground at the Preakness. We're going to have boots on the ground at the Belmont at Saratoga. And we're going to have boots on the ground at the Breeders' Cup. So uh, ride with us. We'll make it fun. We'll make it worthwhile. We'll try and catch a couple of winners along the way. Thank you for tuning in. And ciao for now. They're off.
Welcome in the 2023 First Crop Sires Race. Maximum Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one Colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDM Rising Star. Your champion freshman leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. With new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to DRF.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Mini, a top 10 first crop sire in 2023, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. 14 first crop winners, including My Shady Lady. My of the $500,000 the New York Stallion Series 5th Avenue Stakes. Grade 2 winner, Winstock, and, and Stakes Winston. winner, Solo and Shot, Solo Mini, the 7th leading Solo freshman Shana. sire, and the only Shana. top 10 Shana. freshman sire with a Grade 1 or Grade 2 winner. He sired a $700,000 two-year-old at the OBS April sale. His juveniles sold for nearly six figures on average, more than 12 times the stud fee. Solomini, a controversial DQ from being a grade one winner by two-time horse of the year, Curlin, standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. Sure Bet Coffee. Put the giddy up in your cup. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PastTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Does it bad?